What's up, Server Nation? This is Mighty Mike, the podcast server, and you are listening to ProcessServerDaily.com. Guys, I'm super excited about today's episode, and if you have a story that you want to tell that you're excited about, maybe a dog chased you, maybe a guy tried to shoot you with his gun, maybe you had a heartwarming story where you helped somebody in need. Guys, I want to hear that story on this show. Go to ProcessServerDaily.com slash be a guest. Find some studio time. Go to processserverdaily.com forward slash be a guest. I look forward to speaking to you and hearing your story. Let's get to the show. Our guest today is a private investigator rocking the great state of Texas. He went from being a police officer to receiving training from the FBI. He's hyper involved in the legal community and has even put out a few fires. Ken Ringo, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Ken, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the industry. Well, I started out as a police officer in 2009 and part of my duties was serving paperwork for different parts of the court system all the way down to even serving our city council with their papers for before it was time to meet up, which they would put a lot of stress on us that way. And I worked as a firefighter too in my spare time as a volunteer firefighter. Uh, I was also trained as a medic and my last position as a police officer, I was also one of the medics that would respond to calls. I was a firefighter as well uh, in Moriarty, New Mexico. Our, our closest uh, hospital was an hour away and uh, we're the only ambulance um, with you know, in that area when I was just a firefighter and we, we got funding to get a new ambulance. And that was like the funnest day. We got this big old huge red ambulance that had like airbags in the back and like, you know, it's fancy lights and everything. And it was cool. So definitely a cool, um, not a hobby, but uh, a way to give back to your community. So that's cool. Oh, certainly. Tell me about this FBI training. Well, I took training a active shooter response whenever I took it back in 2013 due to everything that was going on with we were having more active shooters more incidents so the fbi ended up training a lot of police officers in certain ways to respond with that that was the main reason behind that any training is good training so ken i just want to ask you uh you got a family yes i do i have a wife i've been married 13 years she's also an investigator with us and a process server i have two kids uh 10 and 11 they're Boy and girl, they're they're typical kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ken, um, how is it working with your wife every day? You know, we're pro- we're probably the only two people that can put up with each other, and I think that's the reason why we work really well together. That's awesome. That's a great answer. Good job. <laughs> um, so, Ken, there's a reason why you're on my show. Um, you have a lot going on right now, some good experiences, some bad ones. But first, tell me about your worst experience working in the field. Let's see. One of the worst ones as far as uh, – being a process server, I went to go serve this one individual that was being sued, and I just had to serve a subpoena on him, which subpoena is not that big of a deal, you would think. It was in the middle of nowhere. I show up on – drive down his driveway to get to his house. He wasn't there yet. He had a friend in the – in the yard doing yard work. I ask him you know, – I say, hey, do you know where Pat's at? And he tells me, yeah, he's pulling up right now. And sure enough, here comes this Dodge Dooley rolling down the driveway. He gets out. Big old guy. He's at least six foot four. Now I'm five seven hundred and forty pounds. So typically, I try to be be as calm and nice as possible with these folks. And I tell them, it's like, hey, I just got a subpoena for you, real quick. And he gets pretty upset and irate and starts telling me, he's like, well, I'm not accepting nothing here. And you come on my property threatening me. And I said, sir, I'm not threatening you. And say, well, that's not what my wife's going to say in the truck. That's not what he's going to say. Well, guess what this body cam's going to say? So he then shoves me and says, well, you're not leaving. I'm call- I've called the sheriff and the sheriff has come. I said, here's your subpoena. I dropped on the hood of his truck and said, no, I'm going. He says, well, were you ever a police officer? Said, yes, sir. And right now this is unlawful detention. It's like, well, I'm a cop. I can hold you. It's like, no, sir, you can't. It's unlawful detention. Deuces, I'm gone. I get in my car and do a, cut a nice little donut in his front yard because he blocked the roadway. So, you know, just went through the grass, made a nice little rut. So I was happy about that. <laughs> get down the roadway and I end up calling the sheriff's department, let them know what happened. And they t- come to me and they said, so you said he said he was a cop? Yeah. Yeah, he's never been a cop did you get that on video yeah can we get that 
yeah, here you go. Wow, impersonating a police officer. That guy was the one that really got me worked up because I didn't have body armor on that day and he had a very large revolver on his hip and that's it was just one of those days you know I thought it was going to be simple because he was a business owner and Mm -hmm. yeah that's the thing is you you never know or what I find is so funny is you talk to these attorneys who will say oh it's going to be an easy one it's going to be easy one and done with I'm like oh I don't tell them this because they're not going to understand but as a process server I'm like you just jinxed it I'm going to go out there and she would have been the nice old lady that answered the door and received service. But now, since you said that, I'm going to go out there and she's going to, she's not going to answer the door. For well, that's exactly right. And the ones that they always say he's going to be violent, you need to be careful and prepared mm-hmm. are the ones that hug you at the end and say, I mm-hmm. have been waiting for these divorce papers forever. Thank you. <laughs> That happened on Valentine's Day just recently. What do you want Server Nation to get from your story? Be prepared. It's better to be overprepared than underprepared. You never know what people are going to act like. And I've found that going up to these doors, knocking on these houses, is far worse than any traffic stop. I've had more people pull guns on me serving papers than I ever did as a police officer. Oh, man. Now, do you, uh, Ken, do you uh, call the police? Is it brandishing? Is that a, is that in California, they get arrested for that? How about where you're at? In Texas, it's considered disorderly conduct to an extent. Most of the time, they'll let it slide, which is unfortunate, but typically it's uh, they would consider it disorderly conduct. If it's pointed directly at you, it's deadly conduct, mm. and that's deadly conduct is a Class A misdemeanor here in Texas. Mm. So even then, you might not get arrested even then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. Now, tell me about your greatest experience working in the field. I think my favorite one was we get a call from a Georgia deputy. He was trying to locate... Uh, family member of his it was his grandson uh, granddaughter the his son had gotten all the court papers taken care of he was had full custody the deputies down here were trying to serve a writ of attachment to try to get the baby back in his custody they had spent months searching they've gotten other deputies other counties involved we got involved at that point because the the local deputies they exhausted all their resources so we kind of got involved in it and she had family scattered throughout texas so i was able to enlist a couple other people i'd met throughout the facebook groups uh, i think even one of them's on process server nation and we started trying to hunt her down and after about two weeks we managed to finally locate her and was able to help the deputies affect service on that writ. That one, I didn't charge nearly what I could have. I cut it down way, way low because that's one of those stories that, that, that's one of those cases that it just, it meant something. It wasn't, oh, I think my spouse is cheating on me and I want you to go find him or, you know, it wasn't anything like that. It was somebody that was tr- that hadn't seen his 18-month-old child in you know, six, seven months. That one meant something. Yeah. A lot of times the uh, experiences that we have out in the field will result in, you know, happy, warm feelings. Um, but, you know, I think it's important that we, uh, that we have those because so often we have the negative experiences where you have to serve a single mom who's unemployed uh, eviction papers, you know. Mm-hmm. So it goes, it goes both ways, but that's a great story. What do you want Server Nation to get from your story, your greatest experience in the field? No matter how bad a situation seems, no matter how difficult cult the situation that you may be brought into may be there's always an outcome that that best fits the situation there's always an outcome for that person that you're working for that needs your help they have to come to you be, and they need what your experience they need your help to affect what they're trying to do whether it's you know finding a missing child whether it's serving divorce papers whether it's serving custody papers to where they or you know serving a TRO a temporary restraining order that needs to be done that need they need your help with it and no matter how bad it may look in the end you did something that's going to help Server Nation, this is your only opportunity. You are only as good as your last serve. So many opportunities I've had where I thought, you know, I haven't heard from them in a while. And I always think, you know, what was the last serve? Oh, yeah, it was personal service and I got them the proof right away. But there are times where I've slipped or my office has slipped and we didn't get a proof back right away and you don't hear from them for a while. And I call them and I go, hey, I'll give you the next three services free. Your opportunity, your greatest experience, what I've taken from that is, is every opportunity you have to be able to serve the public and be able to help others is an opportunity for your business to shine. I mean, I don't know what that resulted in, but you know, 
for me, I always say, you know what? The greatest review you can give is a referral. You know, tell your friends and family. It's weird in this business, but it's not that weird, honestly. If people go through divorces, small claims, you know, in my church all the time, people come up to me like, hey, this guy owes me money. You know, I uh, got a couple of car dealership clients from that. They're like, I just want you to do all my small claims paperwork. So we handle all the small claims paperwork. We sue them and small, we help them sue people in small claims. That's great, Ken. So tell me about what you're working on right now that has you most fired up? Well, I'm trying to get a my website more mobile friendly because it looks great on a desktop. I've worked really hard on that, but how many people really have a desktop anymore? Everybody's looking at everything on their phones. And you can't walk down the street without seeing every person looking straight down in their phone, walking into telephone poles. Or even if you're driving, unfortunately, everybody still got their heads buried in their phones. I was wasn't a big fan of Wix, but um, it's one of the newer one of the newer ones that's advertising a lot. And actually, it's pretty nice. I I, I like a lot of the features. I don't really like how it it's not like super user friendly. I use Weeb. I started out using Weebly WordPress, and now the the go to one for um, email marketing is uh, ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is a really good site um, for building a you know, reoccurring revenue business to be able to, I, I don't use it now, but if I was going to build a website from scratch, I'd probably use either Wix or ClickFunnels. I built mine directly from scratch. I went out and took all the photos during a big storm that we had had because, you know, it, it looks neat to have, you know, nice kind of, of course, my website's kind of a little darker than some because I just, I like it that way. I mean, because some of the stuff that we do, whether it's missing persons, I mean, you can, one of the photos in the missing person section is actually, uh, photo of a little girl hiding inside of an old fireplace in the middle of an old abandoned house and that's actually my own daughter and then for since in texas uh, private investigators can serve capious warrants we traveled out to a little town called milano texas which still has a jail standing from the 1800s which there's a picture of it's actually my wife's hand sitting through the bars handcuffed (laughs) <laughs> little, little things like that is uh, it's a personal touch to it Ken, what i take from your story about the uh the website building and uh, google and things like that is your website is like your real estate and that's why i love your internet real estate and if you don't have internet real estate no one's going to pull over and, and and check out your business so that's the way to look at it so if you're one of these guys and and i say this in the most loving terms if you're one of these old school guys that are like oh i just go by word of mouth. Well, guess what? You're only going to have the clients that you've ever had because nowadays attorneys, they want to have somebody who knows how to do an e-filing. They want to have somebody that <laughs> that can do a proof of service, have their proof of service automated and get it back to them like within, you know, within one day at least at the most. So I love, I love the, all the marketing tips. It's great. Oh yeah. Server Nation, Ken has been dropping some major value bombs on us today, but prepare yourself because we're headed into the rapid fire round right after a word from our sponsors. Server Nation, I know you're with the times and you want to do whatever you can to have all of the resources for your client. That is why I created 123efile.com. As a process server, attorney, or even an improper, you can visit the website and file your documents in any of the Tyler courts in California. With its easy to use one page operation you can have your e-filing done in a matter of minutes and get back to what really matters if your time is important to you visit 123efile.com server nation welcome back to the show ken are you ready for the rapid fire round let's do it ken if you could recommend just one app what would it be and why i would suggest you know having an app for locating folks whether it be a uh, being a database to locate you know running addresses licenses license plates that sort of thing is the most to me is one of the most important things to have and then of course you know google maps because without a map we don't know where we're going that's right and i would just plug my favorite uh map tool which is Waze app what is your favorite skip trace tactic and then what is your favorite database my favorite skip trace tactic is simply talking is you knock on a door and they say oh no he's not here it's like do you know where he's at yeah, he's at work right now. Where is he working at? Oh, he's working at AT&T. Oh, which AT&T? There's like six of them. Oh, the one on uh, Main Street. Oh, cool. You think he's there right now? Yeah, yeah. He said he's going to be home in about two hours. Like, cool. <laughs> That's my favorite. When you could talk him through because you sound really inquisitive. Like, are you – really? Wow, that's cool. So but what do you do when inevitably they say, who are you? 
No, typically I'll tell them like, oh, I'm just a process server. I've got court papers for them. It's not anything bad. It's you know just this is what happened. They just need to take care of it real quick. You know, it's nothing bad. You know, it happens to me too. It's happened to me. It's no big deal. Just keep them talking. What's your favorite tool for defense? For defense, uh, there's several different tools that I utilize. Typically, a gift of gab is usually one of the best tools you can have for defense. I also wear a body cam for every serve, which not only protects me, it protects them, and nobody's going to question the serve whenever you can say, oh, well, just watch the video. I use a Transcend. It's a uh, Transcend Body 10. They have a couple of different versions out right now, but this little sucker... It's waterproof. It's got night vision on it. You can press – it has one button just to take a photo while it's still recording. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you can have it right on your chest. You can hold the papers out right in front of the guy, press the button real quick, and snaps a photo. I've been using this since I was a police officer, and I always – I got in the habit of pressing that button whenever I was looking at licenses, so I'd automatically have it. So, Ken, I want to I want to drive down a little deeper here. We're almost to the end here. You said about defense, all right? I want to know more about what how you defend yourself. Well – Given my nature coming from law enforcement into this, I typically wear body armor to just about every serve, and I'm also armed with a firearm as per Texas state law. The reason behind this really has to do to because I lost someone I knew, Constable Brian Bachman. He was serving civil papers, walked up to a door just to just to serve a notice, and he was shot and killed before he even realized what was going on. And he's the reason why. I make sure that I'm wearing body armor because, you know, sadly his family, you know, it's been several years now and his family's had to live without him and I won't do that to my family. I've wore body armor whenever I was a police officer and to me there's no difference in making a traffic stop to, you know, we had to go up to houses all the time as police officers and I wouldn't do it without body armor and a weapon and I don't see a reason why to why there's any difference now. No, that's really good. And I know a lot of people that say, you know, we're not officers, we know, you know, we're not cops, we're not SWAT, we don't need body armor, things like that. But, you know, <clears throat> it doesn't hurt to be prepared, that's for sure. To clarify, on the body armor I wear, it's not one of those tactical looking SWAT vests. It's a it's a nice looking over shirt that has our logo on it, the same logo, Ringo's Detective Service. It's something that looks professional. It doesn't look like SWAT or anything tactical. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you for clarifying. That's true. You don't want to you don't want to go to the door looking like you're going to kick it in. <laughs> right. <laughs> what kind of gun are you packing usually? I carry a Ruger SR40, which I started out as a police officer carrying Glocks like all the others. During one time whenever we had to use our weapons, I dropped a magazine and it shattered on me. Oh. And that's I wasn't happy with that, so I carried it for a little longer, and then I got promoted to a supervisory position, and all the supervisors wore 1911s. Carrying a 1911 for 12 hours, that's not going to – that's not fun. That's a heavy gun. So I started looking around for another weapon to replace that with, and I looked at the Ruger's. You see, Glock's patent ran out, and Ruger basically made a copy. It's It's a – you know, centerfire like the Glock is has the same kind of trigger safety on it, but it also has a thumb safety on it, which my muscle memory from carrying the 1911 transferred over to this, but it's a lot lighter weapon and it's a very accurate weapon. And thankfully it fits in the Glock holsters, which the holster I carry is a Safari Land duty holster that's properly retention level four holster. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I know a lot of the guys that are gun enthusiasts will appreciate you sharing that knowledge. Ken, what book would you recommend and why? Well, it depends on where you're at. As far as books goes, I think one thing that we should all do is study up on our local laws and to see what laws affect you in your areas because it, it goes all the way down to city ordinances because you always want to make sure that you're following the laws and making sure that nobody can question the way that you serve them. That's good. You know, not to take, not to make too much light of that, but uh, here in Chico, it's illegal to spit on the sidewalk. How about that? <laughs> we have a law similar to that in Texas. It's actually too illegal to walk in the grass when a sidewalk is provided. Oh, wow. Wow. That, I kind of like that one. You know, people walking on your lawn all the time. That kind of, that sucks. Yeah, that's really important. I think uh, knowing the laws in your local area, um, you know, different places you can park, things like that. Different cities have different laws that affect us as process servers. So that's good, Ken. Thank you. Uh, what is the greatest advice you've ever received? It's kind of a weird one, but it's, it's 
my dad, he always told us that, you know, you got to work for everything that you want, everything that you do, you need to put in all your effort. And the way he always would tell us was whenever I was a kid, whenever I would go out hunting for jobs, he would tell us like, you need to just go up there, tell him what you want to do and offer to work, give him to, if he'll give you a shot, work that day and give him a reason to want you. And I kind of took that to heart. And ever since then, I mean, that's something that I always have done with the clients, attorneys, what have you, is I've given them a chance to try out what I can do, give them a reason to want me. And I think that's probably my best advice is what my dad always told him. Give them a reason to want you. That's great advice, Ken. The same aspect, I would not be the person I am today if it wasn't for my wife. She's the one that pushed me to be a police officer. She's the one that pushed me to start this business. And Ringo's Detective Service would not be Ringo's Detective Service without her. So as silly as it sounds, you know, she's both those two are my mentors. That's good, Ken. Yeah. Keep it close to the vest. That's that's for sure. Having your wife backing you up in your business is big time. My wife backs me up as well and uh, definitely better for it. So Ken, what would you do if you woke up today had all the same skills and knowledge, had no clients, a smartphone, a car, and only $100, what would you do in the next week? I would go park myself in downtown near the courthouse where all the attorneys are, and I would walk up and down every street, go inside and introduce myself and tell them what I can do to help their business. That's how I got started in the first place. Didn't have, I spent every penny I had getting this business started. We were down to our last, pretty much down to our last hundred bucks. I was able to make uh, some business cards. We had some business cards made up. Me and my wife, we went into every attorney's office that we could find in town, asked to talk to the receptionist and then to the attorney and say, hey, this is us. This is what we can do. And I think I would follow that again because that's worked so well. That's a great story. I love that. Um, getting out there and just pounding the pavement, going and talking to attorneys, going in the courthouse. Um, that's all good stuff, Ken. What do you want Server Nation to take from your story? And what would be your parting piece of advice? Don't give up. Don't let other people tell you that, oh, well, you should be doing it my way because my way is working for me. Get out there, do it a way that you're comfortable with. Work the way you're comfortable with, but in the same aspect, stay safe because there's always going to be somebody out there that cares for you that's going to want to talk to you tomorrow. And if you're not being safe out there, and this this goes all the way down to not just worrying about what's on the other side of that door, but worry about what's creeping around the corner on four legs that may come after you. It's being aware of your surroundings, but in the same aspect, don't give up if you're having a slow month, if you're having a slow week or even a slow year. Things will pick up. But, and in those times that you have nothing else to do, go out, talk to attorneys, see if there's somebody out there that may need your help. So I love your story. I want to personally thank you for coming on the show. Um, I've been impressed with your story and I'm excited to share it with the world. What is the best way that we can connect with you? And then we can say goodbye. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. It's uh, de uh, Facebook slash Detective Ringo. You can find us online at DetectiveRingo.com. We're on Google Plus, which is also Detective Ringo. Just hashtag Detective Ringo. We're, you'll find us. We're on Instagram. That'd be the best way to contact us. Yeah, it's Ken at DetectiveRingo.com. Until next time, Server Nation, you've been served up some awesomeness by Detective Ringo and Mighty Mike, the podcast server. Server Nation, I know that you know all about directories and that you know the importance of getting yourself on the web in as many places as possible. But it's more than that, Server Nation. It's about putting yourself on the websites that get ranked on Google, Yahoo, and Bing. I'm excited about a new program that I'm starting. Really quickly, let me tell you. As a process server, I don't cover the whole country, right? We send serves out to other process servers and we call that affiliates. My new program is going to incorporate a system when my customers come onto my website and they do a location search to try to find a process server in a specific location. Many times I do not serve that area and so I might hire an affiliate in another area and manage to serve that way. That takes time and effort away from my local customers and the local efforts that I have here in Northern California. I want to personally invite each and every member of Server Nation to add themselves to my directory on my website. This is what's going to happen. My customers who come to me loyally will search a specific location. If I don't cover a specific location but you do, guess who shows up? 
you do. How great is that, Server Nation? I'm going to share something that means so much to me, my customers. I believe that this will benefit my customers because they will have a resource to go to to find process servers and to get the best rates nationwide. Oh, but there's a catch, Server Nation. There's always a catch. My directory is free for an affiliate to sign up and get the basic affiliate level. But if you do not perform, when my customers come and they see that it's not me or one of my employees or contractors and they see that it's you, they're going to see a rating next to your name. If your rating falls, you may not get any business. Server Nation, give it a shot. Sign up for the free listing, but please take care of my customers. I love them like their family. Visit processerverdaily.com forward slash affiliates. Until next time, Server Nation, stay safe out there.